Hey guys, Vintage Vinny bringing you all my eBay sales for the month of June 2019. Despite the summer slowdown, I was still able to generate a lot of good sales. If you haven't noticed, if you follow me on eBay or not, I had about, I'd say, 76 to about 87 items, and then about into the last month, two months, I really have been kicking it and getting a lot of stuff up and listed because I've been sourcing a lot, so that's really been motivating me to get this stuff listed so that way it can get out of here as fast as I bring it in. So I'm now currently at 215 listings. So I'm very proud of myself for that, especially because I'm not letting stuff just sit around. I'm trying to get it up as soon as I possibly can so that way I can sell it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this sales report. First item, as you can see, is a pack of Lightbright refill paper, I guess for the Lightbright. So this I found in a bin of small items at one of my thrift stores. It was 50 cents. Looked it up before I bought it, and I sold it for $12.99 with uh, shipping included. Next item to have sold, and I have a little bit of a story to tell you all with this. I bought these last, I think it was last summer. There's some Nike Solar Soft Thong, two flip-flops, black, gray. They were in a size 11. Paid $5 for these. I sold them for $25. And I got a message from the seller telling me that they did not receive them. And apparently he had me send them to, I guess, his place of work instead of his house. I sent them to Florida, by the way. So I get a message from them saying that they didn't get the item. And, you know, in a way I feel like they were trying to scam me. Because, you know, if I it says it was delivered and they never got it. I think some people might think, oh my gosh, they didn't get their item and it says it was delivered. Just go ahead and refund them their money. No, I wouldn't do that. I didn't do it. I wasn't falling for it. Anytime I get messages like that or something like that happens, I do get a little worried. So anyway, I basically said to the guy, look, I'll do what I can. And then I had to email him a second time and said, hey, look, this isn't my problem. I sent him to the address you asked me to. Not my fault. So I contact eBay, let him know what was going on. And, of course, my dad is like my mentor, so I went and told him about it. And he's like, oh, they're trying to scam you. He's had this happen numerous times. And he basically said, just go ahead and call eBay and let them know what's going on. Because I had a case open against me for that. I found out as I was scrolling through my eBay app the other day, my, my sold listings, that this person had left me negative feedback. Clearly because he didn't get his item. Well, screw him because... I sent it exactly where he wanted me to, not my problem anymore. But the negative feedback was blocked because when I called eBay and they looked into it, they closed the case in my favor, which was really awesome. And of course it would be because I did what I was supposed to do. So that was a fun little story there. And of course, he's never going to probably be able to buy from me again. And he's, I don't know what the problem was. So I picked this up at a antique shop that I don't think I had been to in probably four or five years. So this is a 1972 Betty Crocker cookbook with the pie cover. For whatever reason, this book always tends to sell for me, whether it's in binder format or if it's just a regular hardback book. Had some issues, as you can see. Paid five for it at a local antique store. Sold it for $20 and fire paid shipping. So this was another piece that I picked up. It was at a vendor mall, antique store kind of a place. Indoor flea market, I guess is what you would call it. So this is a Billy Casper metal practice golf ball bucket. I guess it held like kind of like the same style of wiffle balls. So I got that for $5 a couple years ago. Actually, I think it was right around the time we had moved up to where we live now. And... I liked the art on it. I just thought the images were really neat. Billy Casper was a very famous golfer back in the 60s. And I just, I something about it just screamed interesting. So I went ahead and bought it for the $5. And then I kind of was like, eh, golfing's really not my thing. So I went ahead and put it up on eBay and it sold immediately. I took a best offer of 25 on it, but to go from 5 to 25 I think that was a really good investment. So rummaging through stuff like I normally do because I have so much of it, I went ahead and listed these cork 
flip-flops. Brand new, I never wore them. I tried them on maybe once, and just uh, something about it just didn't really sit with me, or sit well with me. So I got these at Marshalls last year. I uh, paid $9 for them with my discount. Um, funny enough, these actually sold for $15. So I made a little bit of money on them. Not a lot, but I was happy with getting my money back, plus a little extra. This was a really, really good pickup, in my opinion. These are uh, authentic Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green uh, Game Boy Advance cartridges, and funny enough, they sold to someone that was in my old town. So I picked these up in a bag of different games. I think there were eight of them in there. Yeah, there were eight games in this bag that I got at the Goodwill for $5, so that's 62 cents a piece. I took a best offer of 60, so from 62 cents to $30 a piece. That is awesome. So if you remember one of my antique store hauls, you will remember the 70s vinyl Playboy Co uh, Club yellow bunny bag purse thing. I guess that they gave you at the casino way back in the day. So I paid $2 for this, and I sold it for $14.99, and the buyer paid shipping. It was an easy first class item. Just threw it in a bubble mailer, and out it went. So I've had this piece for probably had it since we were at my grandmother's house. It's a 1965 calendar featuring a 40s pinup girl. I guess it was one of those like reissuing pinup girls of the 40s during the 60s kind of a thing. Had it up for a while and somebody bought it from me for $20. I think I picked it up at the antique mall that I got the Playboy Bunny thing. I think it was like three or four bucks, one of those two. So I sold it for $20. It was around the same time that I bought those Bose headphones that sold for a lot of money. So I believe this sold to the same person that bought that other calendar. So this is a 1951 Esquire pinup girl desktop calendar. I got this and a lot of other pinup items. Most of them I've sold, a couple of items I kept from that lot. So I took a best offer of $17.25 for this one. Some of the girls are okay looking. Some of them are just a little, eh, I was like, I like the Vargas and the Petty and all those other different artists. So this is something that I was kind of bummed it sold, but I'm actually kind of glad it sold because I've had it for so long. It's a Big Splash by Puritan mid-century men's bathing suit. Uh, something about it... I just decided I didn't really want it anymore, so I went ahead and relisted it. I think I paid $30, $35 for it originally, and I sold it for $20, so I'm only in it for $10 to $15 now, so I'm happy about that. Of course, buyer paid shipping. I think I was able to get these out first class. So I just bought this a couple weeks ago. It's a Scotch Tape Pink Stiletto Tape Dispenser. It was brand new in the box. I think I paid 2 or $3 for it, and it sold pretty quick. This one was for breast cancer awareness, so it's pink, so obviously somebody who likes pink and stilettos probably purchased this. And it sold for $20, so not a bad pickup. Now this, again, was another really good score. I got it at the um, Fender Mall co-op place that I got that Billy Casper uh, golf ball bucket from. So this was originally $18, and then the booth was having a 50% off sale, so I picked it up for $9. It's the Beauty and the Beast Electronic Talk and View Magic Mirror. And I took a best offer of $95 for this. I was able to get it out first class. Buyer left a positive message, and I was happy. We both got what we wanted. Small little item from the Goodwill. It's a Yeti Rambler Shatterproof Replacement Lid and Straw. That was 99 cents at one of my local Goodwills. Sold it for 10 bucks. Turn a dollar into 10. That's pretty good, I think. So these came in a bag full of different, like, cosmetics and hygiene products at one of the Goodwills that I'd never been to out in Pennsylvania. So I think I paid 2 or three ninety seven for this bag of stuff. These were in there. I just decided to look them up real quick. And I sold them for $5. Like, that's probably not the best profit in the world, but I got a lot of good stuff that day, and one item that I bought is going to be even more profitable, so I had no problem just listing those, and I'm sure somebody was real happy to get these, because I think most of the listings for this item 
were from Asia. So I guess whoever saw this saw that it was located in the U.S. and decided to go ahead and buy it. And these sold, I think, not even 24 hours after I had listed them. So this was another really cute item. I'm kind of starting to pick up the figurines now if they're animal related or if they're just something unique that I think someone will pick up and uh, will enjoy for themselves. So this is a Joseph's original, um, I guess this is like a Pomeranian, like a teacup Pomeranian type dog figurine. Uh, Stamp Japan, paid a dollar for it, sold it for 10, buyer paid shipping. Let's pick this up at the Goodwill outlet. And it's the Swiffer Carpet Flick uh, refill charge cartridges. Box is open. There, it says there were 24 on there. But when I opened the box and counted it, there were actually 30. So, and I did offer free shipping. I don't know why, but I did. Um, and I sold it for $25. So less than a dollar turned into 25 That's a bonus. So fun little story with these, uh, Homco Hobnail White Milk Glass Peg Votive Cup Candle Holders. So I sent these out to a person who I think was going to use them in her church from in South Carolina. And I guess I didn't pack them very well, so they went ahead and they got broken, of course. person emailed me immediately, and after I got it, I just went ahead and refunded them. I, you know, emailed them and said, I sincerely apologize. I, I should have packed them better, you know, just to let them know that. It wasn't their fault that they were broken, yada yada. And I refunded them the twelve ninety nine that they paid. I think I invested less than three dollars on all three of these. I was having a hard time finding them, these ones, because the hobnail ones will always sell. At least they sell for me. So, I mean, I'm sure I'll find more of these eventually, but I had them for a long time and I just wanted them out of here, so I went ahead and listed them. Even though I didn't get to keep the twelve ninety nine, but that's okay. All right, last item of this sales report is actually another very good piece to keep your eyes out for if you're out at the outlet or if you're in the stores. Look out for uh, filters and replacements that are brand new because they do sell. This I paid less than a dollar for, and I sold it for a full asking price of thirty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. There's always somebody out there who's looking for this kind of stuff, and when they see a pop-up on eBay, they'll usually jump on it immediately if it's something that they need right away. So that's it for this eBay sales report. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to know when new videos are posted. All the links to my social media accounts are down below in the description box as well. Instagram is where I'm most currently active, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more.